So we shared with you the bucket list item that is the Red Sox-Yankees game at Fenway Park. And even if you're not a Yankee or a Red Sox fan. But you are a fan of great travel and cuisine. So let's excite your Jet Setter palates and needs as you get revved up for a Sox-Yanks game. Our operative and Boston native, Ken Lakin, has your pre-game agenda. A couple of tips just on places. you got to go to the Bleacher Bar, which is underneath Fenway. And you can see center field from this fantastic. And the cask and flag is an old staple that you have to go to as well. That's a fantastic bar to go to as well. So we did. The Bleacher Bar is right in the famous Green Monster. You can see the field from inside. It's a great place to hang with new and old friends and enjoy some good ballpark fare. Now this is where you hit about an hour before game time as long as you have your tickets. Before that, hit Cask and Flagon. It's within walking distance of Fenway, but you would think with the noise, you are already there. During a Red Sox homestand like this, we pretty much fill up the restaurant by about 4 o'clock and... Um, get lots of people in and out of here, get them well fed, and have a few drinks in before the game. We will take Leanna's advice. She is a waitress and also a registered dietitian at one of the local Boston hospitals. And she starts us with a strawberry jalapeno margarita that was simple but a great summer surprise. It is um, tequila, uh, muddled strawberries, jalapenos, and on the rocks with a sugar rim. Well, I've had this drink a few times, and I like to have the sugar rim to add a little sweetness to the spice. It kind of balances everything out. I think so, yeah. Okay. Next, the cask VIP. Be careful. It's a clementine uh, infused with pineapples for three weeks and then shaken over ice. It's called the cask VIP. Signature vodka, clementine. What's that? Is that orange vodka? Um, clementine flavored vodka by Svedka. You know what's scary about that? Is you what's can't that? taste the vodka. You can't at all, no. <laughs> that is very scary. Now <laughs> some food. You need stuffed cohogs. Those are a Cape Cod special. Um, cohogs are large clams, and so we mix the cohogs with some spices, vegetables, breadcrumbs, stuff them, and bake them. On a diet, take the advice of this dietitian and get the cauliflower. That's new on our menu this summer. Um, they're fried and then mixed in a sweet sriracha sauce. Okay, and you're a dietitian too, right? I am, yeah. So you would recommend that to people who are on a diet? I mean, yeah, it's a good way to get your vegetables in, sure. Now, earlier in the day, we hit Eastern Standard. Again, not far from Fenway. But you need to take your time here. Don't eat and run. Now why? Well, you need to enjoy this great New England cuisine with a foodie and mixology flair. First, we dove into their specialty drinks that had a touch of Hemingway. Yep, this is a whiskey smash that we're sure Hemingway would have enjoyed. It has bourbon muddled with mint and lemon wedges along with some sugar. And then the old Cuban. It screams Papa. It is a light, elegant daiquiri. It has rum, Angostura bitters, mint, and here comes the summer lightness, some kava. It's this sparkling wine addition that makes a hot, humid day tolerable. Now next, a Hemingway discovery, the Jack Rose. This was the drink in The Sun Also Rises, but Hemingway never left the recipe. So bartender extraordinaire Jackson Cannon devised what Hemingway might have used. He used Laird's Applejack Apple Brandy, Grenadine, a bit of lemon, and Peychaud's Bitters. It is fruity but tart and some edge thanks to the bitters. For food, we started with this French onion soup. Sacre bleu. It was hot, full flavored, and thick from the gooey cheese. Yeah, and the best endorsement came from a local hotel concierge who said, if I could have that for lunch right now, that is what I would have. We get it. <laughs> we also got this, half a lobster. This is an appetizer that will fill you up. Now, some tips on lobster in New England. <laughs> First, you must try it. It's so good here. Second, if you don't know how to crack and pull it out, don't be afraid to ask someone. Or just bring us along. <laughs> That's right. Now, getting around Boston is fairly easy, despite some heavy traffic. There is plenty of Lyft and Uber with little wait time. And you can take the tea. 
Boston subway system. It's fairly clean compared to other major places, and it can get you to some of the cities and towns outside of Boston. Which is where we stayed. This is the Free Point Boutique Hotel in Cambridge, not too far from Harvard. It is a relaxing stay whether you're on vacation or on the job. The Free Point is set up so that you feel right at home. You can even bring your puppy dog. That's right. Now, this seems like a millennial style hotel, but it caters to many business visitors who have dealings in Boston. Local celebrity chef Matt Gaudet came up with a menu of healthy comfort food. Now these chicken wings were steamy and succulent. The burger was top notch. We had it protein style with no bun and lettuce and tomatoes instead. It paired nicely with the Swiss cheese and bacon. There is a full bar with a creative wrapping bartender called Trey. You want your own stash? No worries. <laughs> That's right. Within walking distance, get this, is Whole Foods... Trader Joe's, and a great wine and spirit shop. A home run, and Free Point has one of the most efficient gyms. That's right. My wife, Terry, our jet setter fitness expert, was very impressed. One of the things that's nice about it is everything is very uh, organized. There's something for everybody as far as strength, conditioning, um, weight training, TRX training, which is um, using your own body weight for flexibility, strength, uh, core work. Actually, it's one of the best hotel gyms I've been in for using a small space. So there you have it, a Boston bucket list. And how to do it.